Hello, welcome to this uh, episode of the Swedish Startup Sessions. I'm here in Malmö with Bambuser founder Mons Adler and we're going to talk about democracy, we're going to talk about how to build a company when you're a non-developer and very untechnical uh, and still make it into a huge success. So stay tuned. This is Sweden. You ain't packing gas, you ain't hard, you ain't living in the garage. This is Sweden. Fly overseas, clear use of G. Please believe this ain't Sweden. Witness a massacre in Middle East to Africa. Bet you be thanking God. This is Sweden. Stop lying to all, you ain't struggling at all. This is Sweden. You ain't packing gas, you ain't hard, you ain't living in the garage. This is Sweden. Fly overseas, claim use a G, please believe this ain't Sweden. Witness a massacre in Middle East to Africa, bet you be thanking God. This is the Swedish Startup Sessions. Hi, welcome back to the Swedish Startup Sessions. I'm here with Mons Adler, the founder of Babooser. Yes. Thanks. And um, really nice to have you on the show. We've been, been in you, friends Annika. for a long yes. time. Yes. Actually, you. Your crew stayed at my house when you were just starting. Yes, that was a funny time <laughs> when you didn't know anything about this world. Yeah. We needed a so, house to come into and get some new thoughts on how we should proceed. Yeah, yeah. And, and you didn't, couldn't pay for any no, hotel no, rooms. No, 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 no. That was so, so tell me a, a bit about how, how did you really start Bambooza? Because you're not a developer. No. You're a... Sociologist, right? Yeah, sort yeah. of, sort of. Yeah. Work science, but yeah. it's a lot of sociology and psychology. Yeah. yeah so, so how, how, how did you get the idea and how did you start developing Bambooser? I mean, the idea came, of course, from different kinds of, of ways. Uh, partly because I was working at the local TV station here in Malmo, mm -hmm. um, which was, uh, you know, a non-profit organization yeah. with no money, yeah. using old school technologies and so on. Uh, there I sort of understood the, the, the problems that, that that organization were facing when it came to technology. On the other hand, we had this event here in Malmo called Moving Images, where uh, we helped out, it's a conference which was held back in 2006. And so we were helping them out with a project that was sponsored by Nokia. And Nokia had sponsored the event by giving us their new Nokia 93 phones, which was those flip cam phones, which yeah, was yeah. really just for, for shooting. And the biggest thing about those was that they had integrated the first Wi-Fi chips. Mm -hmm. And in that session, you know, I started to think about, okay, what if we could send more information per second than we had been up, you know, able to do yeah. before, before. So that was sort of the, the foundation for it. So as you, you sort of lay out an ecology where you could foresee that the, you know, the capacity of the processor in the phone would be able to compromise or compress the video so yeah. much faster, uh, you would see the bandwidth and the networks grow by a, you know, uh, a great curve and you will also see that by that increase of bandwidth in the networks the price for sending one megabit of data mm. would go down. Mm. So those were sort of the sets but then me and Jonas who founded sort of at least the company part yeah. we can't code. So yeah. we, we were lucky enough to find a student project made by two Finnish programmers, fantastic programmers called Martin Stuha and Tom Sundström. Yeah. And so I, I wrote them an email and we had a little discussion on email, and on my 25th birthday, I was on a plane to Eobo, Turku in Finland. And I visited them on a very special, very Finnish uh, mall in downtown in, in, in Turku. And we sat down at this sort of cartoons, um, you know, cartoons, uh, coffee -ish place. Yeah. And we sat there. We didn't even order anything, but we talked for like <laughs> one and a half hours. And then we sort of came to a conclusion that this is what we were going to do yeah. together. And then I was on the boat back to Stockholm, which was probably the saddest 25th birthday <laughs> ever. Because I, I mean, it, it could be fun, but I was completely alone on this big ship. I didn't even have a place to stay or, you know, I was slept in a chair somewhere yeah. and so on. But um, the result was fantastic. Yeah. So, yeah. But that's quite interesting because I, I meet a lot of... of uh, 
people with your, your sort of non-technical background and instead of, of like you did trying to find somebody they just go around and you know moan that they don't have a technical no. co-founder no. but but I think it's very interesting that you really targeted to find um, the yeah. kind of project or video projects that yeah. you did. No, I think, I think what we understood during that meeting, Martin, me and Tom, was that we needed each other, you know. Yeah. I, we really, really was so dependent on each other. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I use the Swedish word, word you know, handwerk. They, yeah. the, they were the, like the skilled trained Labor, people, yeah. laborers, yeah, that yeah. could sort of form this thing into reality. Yeah. I was not that guy, and yeah. so we needed them desperately. Mm. And I was very honest about yeah. that, you know, I cannot do this without you, mm. and, and you will probably not do this as good without me mm. either. Mm. And so... And Jonas Vig, who's the, yeah. been the CEO, yeah. uh, he brought in the business skills. He brought so in the business yeah. skills, and I mean, I think also when, we, when I decided to bring Jonas on, uh, because I had done Bamboo's restorative exam project for my, my education yeah. that I was on. And so I, Jonas was, we know each other since we were small, so actually the business side didn't matter that much, mm -hmm. but just to have that guy that you know, no matter what happens, mm -hmm. he will be there. You yeah. know, that's, that's sort of the person that we needed, or, or I needed, mm -hmm. because you know, having a business or a startup is, you know, every second month you are on the verge of dying, you yeah. know, everything is complete fucked up. And then, you know, every second month you're king of the world, yeah. you know, that's, that's how you live. And it, it's still like that, you know, it's still, still like that. So what, you, what, what would you say that you bring today to the project? Uh, I mean, it's your baby, yeah. it's your idea. Uh, what's your, your great contribution today? I mean, my great contribution is still that, you know, that very political, ideology-based yeah. form of, of thinking, and, and that's sort of what I contribute mm. to. I'm giving those speeches, I'm at the conferences, I'm also the sort evangelist of, person. yeah, the evangelist yeah. is the, probably the best word for it. So that is what I do, but I mean, I'm completely useless, actually, when, I mean, Jonas is putting in all the hours and actually building the company yeah, as yeah. it is. That's I'm I'm not capable of that. He's fantastic at doing mm. that. And then, f luckily for us, Martin and Tom was some of the best you know coders yeah. in the planet have shown to be. I mean, Martin is on all those open source FFmpeg forums and yeah. you know invited by Google a couple times a year and so on mm. to come and put. So I mean, and and I had no clue when we started. That yeah. was just luck, pure yeah. luck. Yeah. Uh, so uh, and uh, luckily we also let them, you know, hire the, the next round of developers and so mm. on, which meant that they hired really skilled mm. round of new developers. So, yeah, that was, it was pure luck in the beginning, mm. but... And then, then you managed to get funding yeah. from a we Norwegian did. company? Yeah, we did. And, and uh, how, how did you manage to get that? Because, I mean, it's been, been historically, at least, quite hard for, for small yeah. Swedish startups to get funding at all. Yeah, no, it's true. I think, I think that first of all, we had a product that was very, people loved it. You know, at least back then, you had your phone, you downloaded the application first to your computer, and you tried it out in front of your computer. And when you see yourself on a screen, you always become mm. happy. I mean, it's a very simple human nature thing. You know, we just become happy when we see ourselves, just like looking in the mirror. So in that sense, we had a really good demo effect. Mm. And that, I think, brought people to understand what the product mm. was all about. Mm. People directly, instantly understood the power of the tool itself. Mm. Um, and, I mean, we didn't have any business plan and that kind of thing. I remember when we, when we were at Schistefoss offices, they were, you know, they, they say, after a couple of hours of discussions, they said, we're going to invest in you. Mm. But we have ordered two hotel rooms for you and Jonas, you know, we got to stay there for the next 48, hour, 48 hours for you to write the business plan. <laughs> so we at least have something to show our investor, yeah, you know, yeah. panel on yeah. the, the side. So, so that was sort of how it went down. But also we were lucky because I remember the, neg the negotiations were just when the American, you know, finances started to troubling up during yeah. 2008. Yeah. Uh, so they were, they were feeling the pressure from the economic uh, boom there or downturn. So yeah. uh, 
we were lucky to just get it in before August, and then you know the things happened really quickly yeah. on in New York and so on. So, um, so did they look up you, or did you go to them? I mean, we were around with a couple of Stockholm um, investment VCs uh, and did some presentations yeah. that were from us. Sort yeah. of, we mailed and asked if we could come up, and I think we. It's sort of, I think they have a, the, you know, ongoing dialogue between yeah. them. So yeah. we sort of got on a, on a list where people saw, okay, this is a really cool thing, yeah. uh, have a look at it. Mm -hmm. And so I think she's the first one to do that. Mm -hmm. So we, we gave them first a short presentation and then um, we came up to them for this longer session and then they decided. Okay, it's quite interesting. I, I was at Next in Berlin yeah. uh, a couple of yeah. weeks ago and one of the VCs there said that, well, today you have a demo or you have a product. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. the new business yeah. plan. You don't just no. show up with a business plan and no product. No, I, I'm, I'm trying to tell that as well to yeah. everybody I meet. I mean, I, I got an email just late yesterday, someone telling me about the business idea and said, okay, I just asked him how many users and how much traction yeah. do you have? And he didn't even have the thing up and running. And I said, if you get investments, please tell me because I don't think you will. You yeah. know, that's... No, me, unless you have wrong. this, yeah. this uh, amazing track record from before. Yeah. I mean, we can see some of yeah. the... Yeah, of course. I like mean, Rack, yeah, 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 Rack yeah, got yeah, a yeah. shitload of money. Yeah, but, but that's different. Yeah. That's very different. And you really need a track record. Yeah. record. So, um, that you got to build, you know. But I think that that's to to some extent is quite fair because then I you think have, it's very fair. Then you have proved yourself yeah, that yeah. you can can build and you can ship. And the best thing is that that the product itself is real to a mm. whole another extent than the business plan mm. is. It's much it's much more gratitude and motivation for you to actually have a product mm. than just a piece of paper telling yeah. people about what you're going to yeah. do, because what you actually done, no one can take. You know, no one can take that away from no. you. It is yours and you have done this to the world. Mm -hmm. And that is very important. So mm -hmm. always build the product. You know, that's have you that. looked for more funding since? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, we have, but it's mainly internal. Yeah. We have also got Almi Invest yeah. on the board. But except from that, it's, it's mainly, uh, we got Hans Eriksson as well, yeah. who worked for Luna Stolman and MySpace in, which was really nice. It was a great you know, great injection to the company. And so that that really helped us to, to sort of come to the next level. Because, yeah. it, I mean, it was the first time me and Jonas did mm. this. We had no clue. But apart from that, it's just internal. Mm. So. And um, what, what, where would you say that you are on your roadmap today? You have gotten, I mean, yeah. very well known internationally. Yeah. Um, you're blocked in half yeah. of mid in yeah. the Middle East. Yes. Uh, you you got a great deal with Associated Press yes. quite recently. Yeah. No, I think we. What's really interesting is that we are at that point where we have been up and running for quite a while yeah. because of the product itself. It's like four years. Yeah, yeah. it's almost. I think it's even five, five years. years. Yeah. Which means that you know it's, it took longer than we thought. I think because a lot of the ecology wasn't in place when it comes to you know three G networks and mm -hmm. price. I mean, mm -hmm. when we started out was before iPhones and Androids mm -hmm. and so on, and doing mobile applications back then was a whole another thing. So, so we were a little bit too early, I would say. But yeah. but we um, we managed to to keep us alive, and now we are getting that you know paid back. In, in multiple, you know, scales. So how many uh, approximately? How many users? I mean, we have, countries are you in? We have over three million downloads now, and we yeah. are in hundred and ninety countries. But that we have been for quite a while yeah. now. So yeah. I mean, the, that doesn't. But also, we are receiving, you know, up to a ten thousand videos a day and so on. So mm. that's growing as well, which is really nice. Um, and but what we're really seeing is that it's sort of forming that community around the citizen journalism yeah. slash activism yeah. part that is sort of the direction that the community is going yeah. in which was something i think we lacked in the beginning mm -hmm. i mean bambooser could have been for djs or for yeah. soccer players or for um but we, we we tried really hard not to give the the community any direction mm -hmm. uh, but that the community itself would build the direction mm -hmm. for us and it took longer than I think we thought it would, but now when it's coming, it's, it's really nice because it was also one of the missions of the company, yeah. you know, 
as I always yeah, say, we I mean, want. Yeah, because you have yeah. a very interest in citizenship. Yeah, I mean, it was the yeah, it was the democratization yeah. of the tool. Yeah, uh, that was the important thing. What if we could get that broadcasting bus that CNN mm. and BBC owned and afford to own and and buy into every man's pocket? Mm. That was sort of the mission of the company, and and from that, two very interesting questions arise, and it's what will people broadcast mm. and what will people actually choose to mm. watch. The, the problem I'm having right now is that the, demo, you know, the democratic process is, is sort of, we have a tendency to only look at those major political events that's yeah, going like on. Like the Arab Spring. Exactly, yeah. like the Arab Spring and what's going on in Syria right now is of course of a major political issue. And it's fantastic that our tool is used there. And, but I mean, it's just as important for the democratization that, you know, the union, EF Metal in Sweden, can yeah. broadcast their opinions, or you know, a girls' eleven soccer game can be broadcasted. Yeah. Those things are just as important mm -hmm. for democracy as those big scale political events. Yeah. But I think we're 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 getting the the traditional media's attention for the big scale yeah. political. Events. And that's important. It's too. very yeah. important. I mean, some decisive cases, of course, in history, which mm -hmm. is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you, you're facing quite a hard competition from, yeah. especially US-based yeah. companies, uh, which I think have an easier time yeah. because they are in the US yeah. to get the attention and traction yeah. and so on. Uh, you had one competitor, which were Kik, yeah. who were bought by Skype. Was it $20 million or something oh, like that? Oh, it was even $150 million. Ooh. Yeah, so they did a good job. Yeah. Uh, all credit to them. Uh, but they have basically disappeared. Yeah, they disappeared after that. They, yeah. they, I think already before they were bought by Skype, they changed their sort of model from mm -hmm. being just a one-to-many broadcasting yeah. solution to become a video calling system yeah. for Android. And they managed to get hold of some good operators in the US, yeah. uh, which they had a fantastic business model mm -hmm. with. And that meant that Skype could pick them up mm -hmm. in a whole other way. So, so they did a really good job there. Um, but now you have uh, Ustream, yeah. you have uh, this, uh, I can't remember, the inst video Instagram that Mark Zuckerberg was so okay. fond of. Uh, and a small Social cam maybe? Yeah, because that be is like, just, in, yeah. just in TV and um, yeah. I've sort of separated into mm. one mobile part as well. Mm. Uh, so, so how do you look at that kind of competition? I mean, I think, I think for example, Ustream is running away with mm. it in the sense that they are, I mean, they got... I think they were up to almost a hundred million dollars in funding, mm. which is enormous and, yeah. and great applause to them. So, uh, Ustream has sort of lived on their webcam solution mm. and so on. Uh, but when that feels much more professional, like yeah, 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 conferences yeah. and. Um, so I mean, they they are they was I mean there was a period for probably two years when we was the only service who was both webcams and mobile phones. Yeah. Uh, and then Ustream and Justin TV, who only had webcam, moved into the mobile phone mm -hmm. space. But they are still just on iPhone and Android. Mm -hmm. I mean, so looking you're at like on two hundred different yeah, yeah, yeah. models. Yeah, we have three hundred sixty different phones or something yeah. that we're supporting now. Um, six different operating systems and so on. And I mean, just just looking at Egypt and the Arab Spring, eighty eight percent of the videos that were sent from Egypt during the eighteen days of the revolution was from Nokia phones. So I mean, yeah. just not supporting that kind, of course, loses. And that, that has always been our pri pri you know, priority, the mobile phone. Yeah. The only reason why we built sort of the flash webcam thing was but because we thought flash would move into that phone yeah. really quickly. Yeah. And then we needed to support that because it was easier. Um, but um, no, I, Justin TV also have this, I don't remember the name, but for gamers, and mm -hmm. that is growing really, mm -hmm. really rapidly as well just broadcasting mm -hmm. when yeah, people play yeah, yeah. video games or, or something. Um, but that's the competition. I think we are really, if, you looked, if we would only look at mobile broadcasting mm -hmm. for mobile phones, then we are in good comparison to, mm -hmm. to Ustream actually. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're completely owning the other one. Yeah. But how, how does your, your business model look like? Yeah. So I mean, the basic business model at the moment is just a basic freemium premium mm. model where we have actually mostly advertising and that mm. kind of, of agencies paying to do all the different kind of live mm. streams from, from all kinds of things. Uh, and also all those events and conferences mm. and, and that. 
um, but also some internal companies like Telia Sonora do their you know uh, weekly live broadcast. I think it's every second week where mm. they have half an hour, mm. you know, telling all the eight thousand employees about their news and so on, and people can ask questions about what's going on and, and in the chat and so on. Um, but then of course it's it's also all the media houses that yeah. have been a name from the beginning and where where we now with the Associated Press deal stepped into also see if we could use all the user-generated mm. material in some way and, and really getting the imported images of this world out to a larger you know, crowd. That was but you're not thinking of, of applying an advertising in the streams or something? Like yeah, that. well, uh, there, is a, there, there is actually already <laughs> yeah. a beginning. So, so the, for the free model at the moment, if you, for the on-demand videos, yeah. not live, yeah. I, I, I will, you know, the day I leave the company, then maybe <laughs> that will happen, but that is sort of the last yeah. hole. There cannot be, you know, a 30 second pre-roll of a live stream coming out of Syria right now when, you know, someone is shooting at someone else. You don't want that. I mean, it's ruining the whole thing. So, and I don't think the advertisers No, no neither of them. So, so, I mean, it's it's simple solution there where we just bring on the advertising on the on-demand. Mm. Files, which because I think, like, like just in TV, with hundred million in funding yeah. dollars. Yeah, oh, it's I mean, yeah, 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 sorry, yeah, yeah. I mean, you need a heck of a lot of of uh, income I mean, oh, yes. to, to oh, yes. sort of. Um, and I'm, I, I can't even see the exit strategy. No. I mean, that's a billion dollar in exit. I yeah. mean, I can't see it. Mm. Um, and I think that that it, we see that a lot from the American companies yeah. right now with these huge fundings, yeah. and you wonder, but. You know yeah. how how are they going to get the revenue to to, uh, yeah. to make that investment yeah. Yeah. work? No, it's going to be very interesting to mm. see how they operate that and where they end up. But I mean, all my applause to their great way of getting their company funded. So yeah. I mean, that's that's well done. And I know that they have a lot of Asian investors as yeah. well. So they are moving a lot to the Asian space as well. But they, yeah, we'll see. I don't think. I mean. That's what we get also when other people are looking, what, can you do all this with just 12 people? Yeah. How is that possible? Yeah. And so on. So that is also very interesting. But that's, you know, they probably have 10 to 15 people just working on their iPhone app. Mm. Whereas we have one developer for three operating systems. That's yeah. sort of, you know, <laughs> the, the limitations that you get otherwise. So, but we're doing really good. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, so what's the, the future plans? I mean, it's continuing building on that community with mm. activists and, and, and so on, um, trying to get more of the Associated Press deals. I think with one of the videos coming out of Holmes, we sort of break the, the thing because they were not getting any video out at all. Mm. And we had this in fantastic... Homs in Syria. Yeah, Homs in should, Syria, yeah. Add. Good, good. Huh? <laughs> no, so Homs in Syria was this when the gas, one of the gas pipes was was bombed and it was yeah. this huge smoke and this went out not only on demand but live yeah. from the Syrian uh, activists on CNN, BBC, yeah. Sky News, you know, Al Jazeera, everybody. So I mean Associated Press uh, made an, ex you know, they, they counted approximately that over a billion people had watched that clip mm -hmm. through CNN and BBC and the others which is, of course, enormous. And I think that was sort of the turning point where people understand on all scales of the media business where they will not be able to have, you know, 80, 90, 100 cameramen, million mm. cameramen always ready to, to mm. give you what's going on on the mm. planet right now, right here. We had another fantastic scenario also from, from the 22nd of July in Oslo where one guy jumped on a bike two minutes after a bomb exploded and biked around for 22 minutes. And after four minutes, the Danish radio went in and said, can we use your stream in our yeah. news? And they, they just brought it in and so mm. on. So, so I think we're seeing that finally what we thought was the right way to go is, is getting there. Yeah. Um, because it's been so much about the journalists and the, the media houses themselves trying to use the, the, the system. But they, they don't understand really, you know, journalists are different kinds of people in the yeah. time, so they're not used to work with video in that sense at all. No, it was actually ra rather interesting. I was doing a journalist class yeah. uh, and I said that instead of, of uh, many journalists, of yeah. course, tape their yeah, interviews, yeah, yeah. and I said, well, you could use Bambuser yeah, yeah. instead and, and send the live stream. Yeah. And then from, 
from the yeah. audio of the live stream, yeah. you can get your quotes and so on. And then there was this lady, uh, older journalist, she was like, well, you can't do that. And everything shouldn't be so short and, uh, and uh, you know, shortcuts and outtakes and so on. And I was like, but yeah. that was not what I no, was saying. No. I was, you know, saying live stream the whole interview yeah, yeah. and then you can write an analysis yeah. or whatever from it. But I think also that a lot of journalists, especially in the, in a context mm. like, like we sitting here and talking, that they are afraid of you know, sounding stupid yeah. or, or yeah. you know, not... I also think they are sort of, in, in some ways, if you look at the people working on, on television media houses yeah. versus the journalists working for newspapers, are that they are really, you know, really sort of kind of good writers, analytical yeah. people, a little bit introvert many yeah. times, but if you're doing something live, you've got to be very extrovert, very, you know, assertive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you have to be improvising yeah. all the time and so on because all those things can happen. It's a different kind of, of person, yeah. not saying the other is mm -hmm. better than the other, but it's just different, mm -hmm. um, which is fine. So where, where do you see the future of media is going? I mean, the future, if you, I think we're seeing, I mean, the live streaming part of, of this is, of course, just the last end where it was about video. That's mm -hmm. what we saw back in 2006 as well. YouTube had did their journey mm -hmm. really, really well. And so we just wanted to take it to the last level, mm -hmm. you know, where we could do it in real time, not just upload the videos. But what we are realizing now in Bambooser is that actually what we're sitting on is not just the way we're going to live stream the video, but this is the way we're going to record the video in the future. Yeah. Because there is no reason why we should have the actual data or the video file stored on our phones mm -hmm. when it can be instantly available yeah. to every screen, to every person shareable mm -hmm. in the same instant as it is produced. Mm -hmm. So I think we're taking more and more of that turn. You know, mm -hmm. every camera, every video camera, every smartphone will have their SIM cards or Wi-Fi yeah. connections in them. We don't want the video file to be locally anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you need it to... And, and the way we're going to share the video is through the internet in yeah. some way. It's not going to be some special Wi-Fi solution which only works in your home mm -hmm. or somewhere else, but, but really instantly available everywhere. So. And you think that, that video is the future of... Of, uh, media? I think I think not. I think always we'll need all the three different. Yeah. We need sound for some things. We need text for some things, and we need video for others. Uh, video is the slowest mm -hmm. of the medias, but also the most powerful yeah. because it's it, it gives you the most impressions. Um, text is the quickest because we can you know we can read through those fifty yeah. tweets in a minute. We could never read through or see through its fifty videos in a minute. No. So it's a different way of, of operating and I think the biggest lack we have at the moment is that we're so not trained in video. Mm -hmm. I mean every every school day you always deliver in text, yeah. you know, of, for, for obvious reason. I mean when I was young it was so much cheaper to give me a pencil than a video <laughs> camera. So I mean it is for obvious reasons yeah. but, but as we grow up I think, you know, everybody will have uh, accessible technology yeah, which yeah. would mean that they will you know do different kinds of mm. things so, yeah you have done an incredible journey so far and uh, what what would you like to share with other entrepreneurs and, and people who are just you know thinking of starting their startups i think we touch upon some of the stuff yeah. i mean building the product is everything mm. i mean make make the best product ever um and focusing on one thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, like when we did with Bambooser, if we're going to be live, we're going to be the most live thing there yeah. is. You know, we're going to have the lowest latency because that's what it's all about. Yeah. If we're doing something, that is the core of what we're doing. But also very importantly, look at what you want to bring to humanity and mankind. You know, mm -hmm. my motto is always to do the things that I am ready to tell my grandchildren, mm -hmm. you know, when I'm 65 or 70. And if there is something you have to do that isn't that appealing, then don't do it because mm -hmm. it's not going to work and it's not going to be good. So, so really keep that in mind that don't just do simple things that you think you will be rich no. for. You know, do things that actually feel really good in the end of the day and trying to change this world in small pieces, uh, no matter what it is. But, but that is really important. Mm -hmm. um, 
and also for your long-term motivation. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it will fail very quickly if you're just in it for the money. Mm. You know, there is no reason for that because money is not that much fun in the end, you know. So you really need to, to have a larger goal here in mm. life. So, so just make sure that that is involved in what you do. So what's your large goal in life? No, I mean, as I said, I, I want more stories to yeah. tell when I'm old. That's, yeah. that's sort of, and it needs to be good enough. So I don't know what the future holds, but it, keep doing those interesting, there are, I mean, there are millions of interesting things yeah. that needs to be done out there. So that's, that's what we hold in. Thank in you future. for a great interview. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.